Hello and welcome to my talk, What if? A very short primer on conducting multiverse meta-analyses in R. A multiverse meta-analysis is nothing more than conducting all possible meta-analyses for a given research question. What that exactly means will be covered later. Firstly, we will look at uh, why one would even want to go through the hassle of conducting all possible meta-analyses. So why one would want to conduct a multiverse meta-analysis. Then we will talk about the basic idea behind multiverse meta-analyses and all the plots and all the analyses you can see here are prepared on my github repository so you can uh, calculate and uh, plot everything you see here and then i will show you plots a lot of plots so now let's have a talk about the motivation behind conducting a multiverse meta-analysis Imagine a scenario where there are multiple meta-analyses on the same research question but with diverging results. We have meta-analysis A that actually does not find an effect on the uh, research question of interest. Meta-analysis B is inconclusive and meta-analysis C actually finds an effect. So um, you might suspect different reasons for these diverging results. For example, the individual meta-analyses might have used different methods, fixed effect, random effects, multi-level um, modeling. So um, this might be the reason for those diverging results. Or they might have used different criteria for removing outliers they did not remove any outliers or they used a specific cutoff, a fuzzy cut cutoff and so on. Or they might have used uh, different inclusion criteria and the list can go on and on and on. But it is really important to understand why those different diverging results emerged and this can be very tedious and also frustrating. This is where multiverse meta-analyses come into play because they are perfectly suited if you have the same research question but different summary results. The basic idea and origin of multiverse meta-analyses uh, began with this paper which data to meta-analyze and how by uh, Martin Voracek and colleagues. The question uh, you should ask yourself when condu conducting a multiverse meta-analysis is actually the title of the paper. You have to think about which data, which subsets of studies are eligible for your multiverse meta-analysis and also how you could analyze those. So all the different meta-analytical models that could be used and are reasonable um, should be defined beforehand. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I can recommend all of those three papers where you get the background um, that is needed to fully grasp multiverse meta-analyses. So which meta-analysis or meta-analyses uh, should I compute? Multiverse meta-analysis would suggest why not all of them. So the multiverse of meta-analyses for a given research question, the multiverse meta-analysis, is basically the combination of A, all possible study subsets, and B, all available statistical and meta-analytical methods. Let me break this down for you a little further. First, we have to decide on the which factors that is, which data or study subsets should we analyze? Imagine we have a research question, how effective are psychological interventions for individuals with depressive symptoms? Here we could decide to include um, studies based on uh, different uh, age groups, different sexes or different therapies. 
And this could lead to different paths. For example, we could include only adults and only male participants and only studies that investigated uh, thera therapy B. And uh, you can also see that there are a lot of different resulting study subsets uh, that could be analyzed. In our simulated example, there are 36 uh, subsets of studies that could be analyzed in such a way. Secondly, we have to decide on the how factors, uh, that is, which statistical and meta-analytical methods could we use to analyze our data. And here again, uh, we could uh, have three different factors that are interesting to us. The first one, uh, how we handle effect size dependency. So when we have multiple effect sizes per study, what are we going to do with this? Are we going to keep all of those effect sizes or are we going to keep only one uh, effect size per study based on some criterion? Or are we going to average those effect sizes? Those can uh, all be valid methods, but um, lead to different paths that could be taken. We could also um, handle outliers in a different way. We could either remove them or we could keep them. And then uh, there are different meta-analytical methods that we could use. For example, we could, uh, when we um, kept all effect sizes, we could use a three-level model or robust variance estimation. If we only kept one effect size per study, we could use uh, p-uniform selection models. Or if we averaged our effect size, we could use a random effects model. And there are many, many more, but in our example, we have 36 different methods uh, that could be used. And in total, when we uh, multiply our um, which factors with our how factors, we have a lot of potential meta analyses that could be run. And now, of course, it is important what are we going to do when we have so much information and so many meta analyses? Um, then we have to visualize them. And to do this, we can either use descriptive specification curve plots or inferential specification curve plots. Let's have a closer look. Here you can see our descriptive specification curve plot with simulated data. Let me walk you through this in more detail. We have our upper panel with the descriptive specification curve and our lower panel with the which and how factor combinations. Each of those vertical lines represents the confidence interval of a single meta-analysis. Down here on the x-axis you can see that in total we have 160 meta-analyses included just in this one graph, in this one picture. On the y-axis you can see our summary effect size, in this case hedges G. And this black line represents the effect size estimates ordered by magnitude from our smallest effect size to our largest effect size. Those uh, colors represent uh, the amount of included primary studies. Warmer colors include more studies and um, cooler colors include less studies. You can also see a black dotted line representing the null effect. So all the confidence intervals that cross this line are statistically not significant. And a red dotted line representing our smallest effect size of interest. And now you can uh, investigate why meta-analysis A and B and C uh, diverged. Um, we can have a closer look at the which and how factor combinations that are um, the reason or could be the reason for different uh, results. Our meta-analysis A included all age group, only uh, male participants and all therapy types. They uh, did not remove any outliers and they used p-uniform uh, to analyze the uh, data and estimate the effect. And meta-analysis C, they uh, made some different um, choices. They took different paths, 
but uh, maybe even more importantly than pinpointing why single studies diverge is we can look at the overall picture from a bird's eye perspective and actually identi identify patterns. So for instance, we can see that female participants produced much larger effect size estimates than male participants. Therapy B produced uh, much smaller effect size estimates than therapy A or therapy C. We can uh, also see that uh, removing outliers um, leads to uh, smaller effect size estimates and uh, overall we can have a, a very nice look at the robustness and overall evidence um, based on our which and how factor combinations. And here you can see the same plot but simulated under a null effect. So uh, all those confidence intervals actually cross the null line. So uh, those studies, uh, those meta-analyses would not be statistically significant and report quite small effect sizes. But here you have some outliers that um, are uh, quite large in comparison. So it can be helpful to look at uh, the descriptive specification curve to see um, how the overall evidence um, looks. Here is an example from an ongoing research project where we actually plot over 5,000 meta-analyses in a single plot uh, to answer questions uh, that are relevant for psychotherapy research. So um, it becomes quite uh, overwhelming, but this plot helps us a lot in finding patterns and understanding how robust our evidence actually is. Here you can see an inferential specification curve plot with simulated data. And I simulated a real effect, so you can see that our red descriptive specification curve plot is different from a null scenario, which is represented by this gray line. To uh, accomplish this uh, gray line, I simulated data under a null effect and did some bootstrapping to get the 95% confidence intervals. And this plot is not in this area, so we could be pretty sure that the effect is uh, different from a null effect. But uh, in this example, I simulated a null effect. So uh, here we already know that there's no true effect. And in this case, the uh, descriptive specification curve is in our gray area. I highly recommend pre-registering or uh, publishing a protocol for your multiverse meta-analysis because uh, it is quite uh, funny that when you want to look at flexibility in data analysis, you can also fall victim to uh, flexibility in data analysis. So uh, it is a good idea to be very clear upfront what you are going to investigate and how you uh, plan to do so. Here you can see some uh, readings that I suggest. You already saw those two papers, but uh, Julia Rohrer wrote a very nice blog post on dangers and pitfalls of multiverse uh, analysis in general, and I can recommend this a lot. Thank you so much for your attention. If you are interested in the slides, uh, you can find them at my uh, Open Science Framework profile. If you're interested in the code for all the uh, plots you have seen, you can find it on my GitHub repository. And if you are interested more generally in related topics, uh, follow me on Twitter where I post uh, on a regular basis. Thank you. Bye.